Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Introverse Uncharted. And uh, today we're going to do a little bit on the uh, sports and entertainment side, which I haven't done yet since I came back. So for those of you who uh, haven't spent a whole lot of time on my channel, I try to kind of divide it up. And there used to be like a huge amount of subsets of kind of how this channel uh, would function. And uh, sorry, I'm going to offset that blur a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, you know, there used to be a lot of subsets to how this channel functions. So I'd have like, uh, you know, uncharted football and uncharted wrestling and uncharted sp uh, space. So like did a lot of like little subsets and we broke it down in half, uh, probably partway through our run last year where now we have uh, uncharted sports and entertainment and then uncharted, uh, space, essentially introverse uncharted is the, the main chunk of it. Um, with that being said, this is going to be one of our sports and entertainment episodes. It is coming right off the heels of Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. This is not going to be a very long episode. Uh, I have a lot of opinions on what we saw in the Mike Tyson fight yesterday, as well as the rest of the pay-per-view, to be completely honest with you, or the, the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the premium live event. It was, man, there was just, there was just a lot. There was a lot about it. Um, first though, housekeeping, let's get that out of the way. Um, if you guys haven't yet, please, 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 please subscribe to the channel. Uh, just right now, just, it's super easy, right below me. There should be a button that says subscribe. Just click it, click that subscribe button. Um, it'll give you all the updates and stuff. As long as you hit the bell button as well, give you all the updates of when I got new content coming out and uh, obviously trying to do it a little bit more frequently, not forcing it, not doing anything like that, but trying to have a presence and use it here on um, Introverse Uncharted. <coughs> Sorry, I cannot get rid of this pesky cough. Um, all the socials, all the social medias, I'll put them right up, uh, right up here. Right, cha. But please go to all those and uh, follow, like, subscribe, all the goodies, so that you can interact with the page, interact with the channel, interact with us, and uh, it'll also help. For having you guys comment and all that kind of stuff, we should drop a comment down below again of stuff that you are interested in hearing about, and I will gladly, uh, you know, talk about it on the channel. If it's stuff that I don't know about, I don't know about everything. Uh, I will learn about it, or we can learn about it together. You know, that'd be fun. A um, little bit of housekeeping, also on top of all that. So obviously, like, follow, share, subscribe to the channel and to all the socials. That would be gladly appreciated spread the word um i've gained a handful of subscribers since coming back to the channel i'd like to get that up the more people the more outreach the more fun this can be um the next thing uh i was scheduled to have a live stream monday at 2 30 mountain 3 30 central time to cover starship ift6 uh, that has been delayed by 24 hours by spacex so the live stream will now be tuesday the 19th at 2 30 mountain 3 30 central uh, i'll go live 30 minutes before the opening of the window and the window is still 30 minutes long so uh from uh 4 to 4 30 central um 3 to 3 30 mountain is how that will look um super excited I think that's still going to be great. Hopefully they don't delay any further. They have a three-day window. They have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, if they delay to Wednesday for some reason, I'll have to scrub my live altogether as I will be working during the window, which sucks. But um, hopefully that's just not the case. And they, uh, they go as planned on Tuesday. The weather looks better. That was the reason for the scrub or, or for the move was uh, high upper level winds and a chance of thunderstorms uh, in the Boca Chica area on Monday. So they had to do what they had to do and I have to do what I have to do. So we're going to move it to Tuesday and hope and pray that the rocket gods are with us and we get to go on Tuesday. So again, right here, bang, tune in uh, Tuesday at 2.30 Mountain, 3.30 Central um, for my coverage of Starship IFT-6. Now, now that we've gotten through that, <coughs> sorry, now that we've gotten through the, uh, nitty gritty of that let's talk about what we saw last night let's talk about it i didn't prepare a whole lot a lot of this is just going to be opinion so there's not a lot written down okay um i have the fight card via cbs on my phone so that i can uh kind of reference it but 
let's talk about this night, okay? The live coverage started at 6 o'clock my time, Mountain Time. And uh, they went right into, uh, you know, the uh, Goyat Nunez fight as kind of that start uh, to the evening. I know there were a lot of pre, pre-card pre matches, essentially, ones that weren't televised. Um, but there was... They start with Goyat and Nunez. This fight was an absolute and utter joke. Is kind of how I'm going to... It's the nicest way that I can say it, right? Like, I, if you're looking for spoof fights, this is probably the entertainment value at which you... um, Which you desire. Um, so, like, Nunez apparently has only fought for couple of years maybe not even uh big social media following all sorts of stuff like that right um and nunez goes against goyat who has an actual boxing background who who is a fighter and like a the matchup doesn't you could tell what this is for right like this is this is clout at its best but either way uh this match was full of BS is the best way that I could put it. Um, Goyat was obviously cocky the entire time as the actual prize fighter in this uh, in this match. Um, Nunez trying to make a name for himself, trying to validate his stance as a fighter while also being a social media mongol, you know, a YouTuber like Jake, all sorts of crap like that. Um, and then, I mean, I to me. Like, boxing always had that, uh, that respect is the word that I'll use. It always had a stature. Boxing was always a, a stature-based thing. It was uh, always taken very seriously. The boxing community has a lot of pride in, in what they do. Um, this fight was the exact opposite of that. It, like, Goyat spent plenty of time pandering to the crowd mid-match, uh, Every time Nunez would land a punch, he, he just like would shrug it like it, it, it a like it didn't hurt, but b like it didn't matter. Um, and and it culminates to me with him with with Goyat pushing Nunez into the corner and literally like dry humping him on TV. Like, there's nothing serious about this fight. And to me, it set the tone for how I was concerned that the night was going to go. In my head, and we'll talk about this more when we get down in the card, but in my head there was always uh, a fear that this was going to be a cash grab. That none of this was serious. Um, and not, not I'm not saying the pre-cards, I, I don't know, I don't watch a lot of boxing. So the pre-cards might have had some serious stuff in it, and we'll talk about those a little bit further. But I was worried that Tyson Paul was going to be a cash grab. We'll talk about that later. But this, to me, immediately kicked the red light on. Like, the concern that this was not going to be a serious evening um, of boxing. And it was just a bad fight. Okay, Nunez obviously loses uh, via unanimous decision. Goyat landed a couple good shots, but like, again, dude, you're, you're a real, you're a champion fighter. You're a prize fighter uh, going against a social media guy, a YouTuber, uh, a TikToker. Like you're telling me you couldn't rock him. You couldn't knock him out. Like you, it, and it, they went full distance. It ended in decision, unanimous decision that, that Goyat won this fight. And I just don't, I don't get it. He toyed with him. He, he played with his food the entire time. Just rock him. S send the kid home. Like, I, I just don't get it. I didn't feel like there was any respect in this fight. Uh, I feel like Nunez took it as seriously as he could for having a guy mocking him and humping him in the corner, but just felt like a letdown. And that was literally the appetizer to start this night off. So it didn't start off very good, in my opinion. But let's move to... Uh, to Barrios Ramos. Uh, this fight, on the other hand, was awesome. I really enjoyed this fight. Um, you know, Barrios, obviously the champion in the situation, uh, 
just looked dignified, looked poised, looked cocky, had some arrogance to him. Um, Ramos, to me, had a little bit of the build, uh, like a, a bigger build. But stature-wise, they weren't, uh, you know, vastly separated. It, I mean, just a highly competitive fight the whole time. Um, you know, they, they had talked that Ramos was going to be the underdog. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I honestly, by round two or three, completely disagreed <coughs> and felt that Barrios had not taken it seriously. He had looked past it. Um, and Ramos came out swinging, landed some really good shots. Um, Barrios had some good late rallies and this fight again, went the full distance and was absolutely entertaining to watch. Am I upset that there wasn't a knockout? Not even with this fight, really. Like, the first fight, knock him out, okay? Like, there's no need for us to to dick around, forgive the language on that one, for, for nothing. Um, but this was a championship fight. Going the distance was awesome. It ended in a split decision draw. I actually disagree with that. I think that Ramos probably should have won that fight. He had more offense the entire time. Um, so I think Barrios got saved by the decision. Um, but that's not to take away from, from Barrios either. Like, let's not think that. That's not me saying, oh, he just didn't deserve it. Like, they both put up an excellent fight. It was awesome to watch. And if you compare that first fight to that second fight, night and day, a better experience watching Barrios and Ramos fight. Um, again, just disappointed that Ramos didn't win. I, I felt like, um, like he just had the better night. That's all. That's what boxing kind of is, right? Who who has the better night? Who has the better evening? Uh, who gets luckier? Who lands more shots? Um, <clears throat> I thought Ramos had the better fight, but Barrios retains via a split decision draw. It sucks that it had to end that way in a in a title fight. I don't like draws for title fights. Um, but again comparatively to fight number one an absolutely awesome time way better than uh than the first fight we're gonna move to the third fight on the card katie taylor amanda serrano um i have opinions about this fight this fight again went the full distance um katie taylor came in the champion she had just taken a little hiatus so she had taken some time away from uh from boxing um, comes back to do this fight. This was the second fight of their, uh, you know, their saga together. They've, they've fought once before, um, with Katie Taylor winning the first round or the first fight. And, uh, you know, Serrano obviously looking to win this championship and, uh, even the, even the, the playing field essentially go one, <coughs> one. This fight was on the surface, a good fight, very competitive, bloody, uh, they they definitely, ab especially by the end, those last couple rounds, uh, they they weren't pulling any punches. That's for sure. They were rocking each other. They were absolutely going, trying to win that title. But then you dig in, right? You dig in. What they tried to accomplish in the post fight was to say that Katie Taylor didn't fight dirty. I could not disagree more. Okay. Every time that Serrano got any sort of momentum, Katie Taylor would bring her into a, to, you know, into the clinch. Now I understand that that is a part of boxing and you know, the commentators were saying how smart it was at times for her to kind of stop the momentum that way. Sure. But if you go in for the clinch and every single time you go in for the clinch, you headbutt your opponent and then try to disguise it in the clinch. That's just an absolute coward move. I don't care who does it. Okay. If it were the other way around, I would, I would still advocate cowards move. It does not matter. Okay. Headbutting is obviously not allowed in boxing and Taylor was warned about it at, to my count, a minimum of four times where you could hear the ref say, stop doing that, or I'm going to start deducting points. And then eventually had a point deducted for headbutting. Okay. What the first headbutt gets Serrano on the, like right on the temple, right on the top of the eyebrow and it cuts her open. She starts bleeding. They go in between rounds. She's getting patched up. Katie gets her with like one good hook 
and that whole thing splits open. I'm not a blood guy. Let's square that up. People who know me know. Uh, that was not the funnest thing to watch. But, again, it's not about... Like, you just can't be that way, right? Especially as a champion. A champion who just went on a hiatus, comes back. This is her first match in a long time. And, you know, we're going to have this joke. This, this, you know, just not, not fighting clean at all. The post fight was fairly hilarious. Uh, obviously, this fight ends in a unanimous decision that Taylor wins and retains the title. I, I couldn't disagree, again, more. With, with the outcome of this fight. Couldn't disagree more. A, Serrano had the better fight. She didn't cheat. She didn't headbutt. She didn't do any of that. She had a cleaner fight. She also had better flurries, better combos, better speed, better footwork. Taylor, the entire first three quarters of the fight, literally was on her heels, mouth wide open, like trying to get air in. Like, lucky she didn't get her jaw broke. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy that Serrano loses by a unanimous decision. And on top of that, loses by unanimous decision to somebody who had points d reduced because of cheating, because of fighting dirty. And after the fight, Taylor's like, I didn't fight dirty. I did deserve to lose the point, but I didn't fight dirty. Uh, me and a buddy were talking about this very literally. Like, via text during the fight. Those two things can't be said at the same time. I deserve to lose a point, but I wasn't fighting dirty. Those two things don't coincide under any circumstances. Again, this just shows that that's the kind of thing that's acceptable, though, right? Like, you can you can do that. It's completely fine. I mean, if I were Serrano by, you know, round eight, seven, eight, you know, in, in that area, I'm, okay, cool. We can clinch and headbutt now. Why not? Even the score. Take the point deduction. It obviously didn't matter. She was the one with the points reduced is still the one that won. So just headbutt her. Who cares? Who cares? It was still between the Ramos and Barrios fight and then this fight. These two fights were fun to watch. There were there was drama. There was actual competition happening in these fights compared to that first fight which was essentially a, a, a dollar menu fight like like an og dollar menu fight like you're just getting plain plain ass hamburgers kind of fight like it was just boring it was boring and it was clout based and it was arrogance and it was showboating and it was despicable bullcrap that ends in a unanimous decision Barrios Ramos split decision draw and then a unanimous decision in Taylor's favor. I disagree with the results of the two middle ones, but they were entertaining. They're fun to watch. They were competitive. Those those fighters came in and said, "This is a platform that has 8 million people on it. I have to win these fights." Like it was fun. Those were great. In between all these fights, you kind of get the the smatterings of you know them starting to do the promos and stuff for Paul and Tyson. Uh, the crowd was not cheering for Paul under any circumstances, and uh, you know the first time you see Mike coming into the locker room, he's wearing what looks kind of like a throwback letter jacket with a picture of himself on the back it says Iron Mike. It was one of the coolest jackets I've ever seen, um, and he just looked ready to go. In the locker room, he looked absolutely legit. Uh, you know, obviously, the one of the talking points is that his son interviewed him in the back while he was wearing assless chaps. That's just funny. Jake Paul's not doing that. That's just Mike being Mike. The baddest man on the planet. Like, nobody's going to tell him he can't. Nobody. So, funny. Funny haha. -ha. And then we get to the fight. I've seen a lot of opinions on this. I feel like I kind of ride this exact, like, the... The most opinions kind of fall into where I kind of sit. There was a year, if not more, if not a little less, whatever. I don't keep up with it a ton. Uh, but there was so much buildup, so much hype. Uh, you know, they get close to the fight. Tyson gets injured. They have to sub out. Uh, Jake, you know, fights a, a different fighter in the absence of Mike Tyson. And then they build back towards this fight. Okay. There's so much buildup for such 
a waste of time snooze fest of a fight. Snooze fest. Boring. Disappointing. Not fun to watch. No matter who you were a fan of. Like, there, A, there's like 10 people on the planet who are actually cheering for Jake Paul, and one of them was his fiance, and the other one was his girlfriend. I absolutely doubt his own mother was cheering for him. Like, can't even fathom it. The world wanted to see Tyson be Tyson. Be the Tyson they saw 20 years ago. You know, when he's 30 and in shape. And that's not to say he's not in shape. Mike Tyson is in freakishly good shape for somebody who is 58 years old. There's a difference between doing little promos on TikTok and, and stepping in the ring with somebody who's half your age and in arguably, probably, it's probably not even arguably, in better shape and better condition than you. I said this to, the, to my inner circle before the fight. This is key. And it's that if Mike didn't win in the first three rounds, that this fight was going to go to Jake no matter the circumstance. And that it was just going to be ugly. And that is exactly what occurred. Okay. Round number one, Tyson comes out. He gets a solid left hook in on him. He, he's, you know, looking not like people wanted him to look like he did when he was 30. He didn't. That's just a fact. He didn't. But he came out that first round. You know, he's moving fast. He's getting those jukes in. Footwork looked good. Threw a couple solid hits. But just not enough. It just wasn't there. Round two, similar. Came out looking all right. Not as good as in the first round. Got a couple in on him. But Jake still... Jake avoided him for the first three rounds. Okay? Like, just kind of held out. Just, A, he has longer reach. So he doesn't have to get in as close. If he gets in close with Tyson, it's probably a different fight. But he wasn't consistently in with him. Kind of danced around, kept his distance, right? But then we get through three, and by the end of three, Tyson just looks absolutely burnt. <coughs> He's been in the ring six minutes. Six minutes. He used to have to do 30s. Like, if this were a traditional fight it would have been 10 three minute rounds it wasn't hey it's been 20 years but again the build-up the hype tyson saying that he is in shape he's ready to go he can do it this isn't to take away from tyson what i'm saying right now doesn't it should not take away from mike tyson mike tyson is a 58 year old man who put in the work who fought through an injury and still made it through eight rounds with somebody half of his age he could be jake paul's father like, it was, for Tyson, absolutely fine, right? That's not to say that by round four, five, six, that Jake couldn't have just knocked him out and didn't because, A, there's some sympathy there, right? There's, I can't rock this old man right now on TV and absolutely stunt everything that we've done. There's that. My problem is that by round four, five, and six, it became obvious that it was a cash grab because they wouldn't end the fight. Both men said that that fight was going to be over by the third round period. Mike Tyson said the first time he hits him, it was going to be over, and it wasn't. He got the left hook. It just didn't do it. It didn't work. By round four, there was nothing that anybody could do to convince me that this wasn't a cash grab. It was an absolute cash grab. The cash grab started way back when they started hyping this fight to begin with. That Jake Paul could beat Mike Tyson. There's nothing like clout like that, right? There's nothing like the publicity of having the baddest man on the planet, the best fighter since forever. You know, up there with Muhammad Ali. There's nothing like having that guy versus essentially somebody who picks his own fighters. Like, this is going to be... There was weird clout buildup for that. It's all publicity. It's all money. But then you get to the weigh-in. And the weigh-in, to me, was the most obvious piece that says this was a cash grab. Okay? 
A, yeah, Jake stepped on his toe, and then he gets him with a slap, right? Sure. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I, I've i said this to a couple people. I, I don't think you should have slapped him. I would have absolutely right-hooked him and just been like, see you tomorrow. Let him know. Let him know this is real. But it wasn't. That's the thing, right? And it be, it gets to be more cartoonish seconds after that. He gets the slap. Then he does the yoga pose because it didn't actually hurt. Like, oh, he, he hit me, but it was. Now it's just personal. Now it's personal. It should have been personal the whole time. It's a fight. It's a boxing match. It's not a celebrity endorsement. It is a fight. Okay. And then Jake proceeds to call him an angry elf. Do we just whipping out elf references because it's Christmas time? Like that? It just ha- it just meant nothing. Like it just was it was nothing. It meant nothing. And it honestly to me just made it look comical. There was nothing intimidating about it. Their weigh-ins were their weigh-ins. They were a pound separate with Tyson on the heavier side. Of course he was. Like, I just don't... It looked ridiculous. And then they moved to fight night. And it falls completely flat. Just completely flat. And that's sad. I was sad in the beginning of the fight because, oh, like, this could be the last time that we get Tyson... And again, in my head, the paranoia that this is a cash grab. By round five, I was positive it was a cash grab. And it became sad because they had wasted everybody's time. Everybody's time and everybody's effort were completely wasted on a lackluster fight. Well, wasn't even a fight. They hit each other like less than 20 times. Like, and the commentators started like borderline insulting Tyson by being like, oh, but Paul has... Double the punches thrown, and it's just hard to watch. It's not. He hit him like eight times. By the third time, Tyson was obviously fatigued and out of it. Like, God, he's a 60-year-old man. Almost 60 years old. I literally just saw something that said he's probably going to make over $20 million on this night. It's It was a cash grab. It was an absolute cash grab. This fight did two things. Number one, an absolute cash grab for the people involved. Paul and Tyson are going to get paid stupendously. And it did a lot of good things for the undercarders. It just brought a lot of eyes to them if you didn't know them prior. If you don't keep up with boxing, again, I don't keep up with boxing, but I became interested in, you know, Barrios and Ramos in Taylor and Serrano because they went out there and they put on a show. They went out there and they fought. But the other thing that they were trying to accomplish was to say that Netflix was capable of hosting live event sports. Okay? And they couldn't. They couldn't. The buffering, the blurry screen, all that crap. Those were all Netflix server problems. Netflix had the absolute gall to say, no, 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 it's not us. It's your network service providers. No. You aren't used to having 8 million people on your on your platform at one time watching one event. There were people trying to watch. Like, I was seeing it on TikTok. My wife was seeing it on TikTok. There were people trying to watch regular TV shows on Netflix who were having buffer problems because the bandwidth to the servers were so bad. They weren't ready. So that's, here you go, right? They build it up. They probably got a lot of brand new subscribers just for this fight who will have have Netflix for a month and then cancel it. But they get all that. Their servers can't hold it the entire night. Like, honestly, I was having glitchy problems the whole night, but it just got progressively worse the closer you got to Tyson Paul. And then the Tyson Paul fight is just bad. So it makes Netflix look ridiculous because they want to host two NFL games on Christmas and WWE raw moves there full time in January. So you get live event after live event, after live event, after live event starting Christmas. And then the Tyson Paul fight was just bad. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun to watch by round three. It was just sad. Mike Tyson said he doesn't think this is the last time he thinks he has more in him don't you're you're, he's always going to be the baddest man on the planet okay there's nothing that can take away from iron mike 
Fact is, Jake Paul didn't fight the Iron Mike from the late 80s and the 90s. He fought Iron Mike Tyson now, who's older. Out of, not in the same shape, not in the same conditioning, hasn't been in the ring in 20 years. This was... Prime Tyson beats Jake Paul every single time. Every single time. You can't convince me otherwise. But this was not that. This was a cash grab. It was a waste of our time. It was insulting. And it was sad. It made Netflix look ridiculous. It made Jake Paul look ridiculous. And it made Mike Tyson look old. And that is sad. They could have done so much. Like that I just feel like that it just didn't it ended up being nothing. Like I, I turned off Netflix last night and just said I could have done other things. I could have watched other things. I could have been other places. But I wasn't. It generated me something to talk about on my channel. So thank you for that. Logan Paul saying that he could kill Mike Tyson in the end is hilarious. Dude, you have a long term contract with WWE. You don't, you don't ever show up. You're actually athletic. For pro wrestling, you actually fit the build. You're good at acting in that environment, and you're athletic. You're agile. But then you don't ever show up. And now, you know, I, I heard not too long ago that you're taking a long term hiatus. So you're going to do that. And then you want to step into the ring with Mike Tyson because you just saw that he can't do it. He can't go. He can do three. Do three three-minute rounds and just be done with it. That's my opinion. That fight should have been three three-minute rounds. Done. But it wasn't. And in the end, it did nothing. Except for make them a lot of money. And cost us four hours of our lives. That's it. That's my opinion. This video went way longer than I thought. I was going to make a 10 minute video. I kind of ranted and rambled. Um, again, I just was not impressed. Uh, at least with the main event. Uh, Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano loved that fight for the most part. Didn't like the, de the decision. Uh, Barrios Ramos loved that fight. Didn't agree with the decision. But amazing fights. Worth the watch on those two. But the opening fight and the closing fight. Awful atrocious bad zero out of ten wouldn't recommend go back and watch it i'm sure netflix is going to show it forever but teach their own that's going to do it for me today everybody uh thank you so much for tuning in check out the socials like follow share subscribe like this video comment your opinion on this video i'm down to listen to it even if we don't agree that's the thing about this world now, especially with how heavy politics has been and all that kind of crap in the last, uh, you know, handful of years. Uh, I think there's this uh, outstanding opinion that people don't, that people can't have conversations and disagree, okay? Uh, if you guys thought this fight was amazing, tell me about it. Tell me why you thought it was amazing. Maybe I'm just not seeing the perspective, right? Maybe you can convince me that there was some value to it. I would love to be a part of that and if so i'll do another video where i talk about you know i'll go through some comments and we'll talk about you know maybe why i was wrong i'm fine with that i'm completely fine with it fine with being wrong 100 percent fine with being wrong again thank you guys so very much for tuning in check out the socials like follow share and subscribe tune into the live on tuesday for starship ift6 that'll happen at 2 30 p.m mountain time 3 30 p.m central time uh, as long as they don't move it again but again, follow all the socials because then you'll be able to see any updates that I can put out uh, about whether or not they delay or whether they go or all that kind of stuff, right? Thank you so very much for tuning in. And remember to do more than simply exist and come with me into the Uncharted. I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.